What's up guys, welcome to the Microjig Shop. My name is Morgan and today we're going to be building this 360 sled. For this project you'll need the Zero Play 360 sled kit or if you already have a Zero Play miter bar, all you need is a pack of one and a half inch dovetail hardware. Cut a piece of plywood 22 inches by 20 inches on the table saw. Next, in a single cut, cut the piece down to finish at 16 by 20. Okay, so we have our 16 by 20 sled and our 20 inch long, six inch wide off cut, which we're gonna use later on to build the sled. So just set that aside, we'll get to that in a bit. All right, now we're gonna route some relief grooves where our dovetail tracks are gonna go. The step isn't totally necessary, but it definitely makes routing your dovetail tracks a lot easier. You can either do this on the table saw or on a router table. If you're on a router table, use a quarter inch straight bit set to a cutting depth of 11 30 seconds of an inch with your fence at four inches. Route the first relief groove, then rotate your workpiece 90 degrees, then route the next one. Do this for all four sides. Then set your fence to eight inches and repeat the last step. You only have to run it three times now since the middle groove doesn't need to be cut twice. All right, all of our relief grooves have been cut. Now we're gonna change bits and route our dovetail tracks. Use a half inch 14 degree dovetail router bit and set the cutting depth to 3 eighths of an inch. We're gonna do this the same way we routed the relief grooves. Set your router table fence to four inches and run all four sides rotating 90 degrees after each cut. Then set your fence to eight inches and repeat the last step. This is gonna create these intersections that allow you to rotate the fence. First, we need to adjust the miter bar to fit in the miter slot. Stack the top bar onto the bottom bar with arrows facing upward and pointing towards the front. Insert the three button head screws through the counterboard slots at the top bar using the hex key, but don't tighten them all the way. Make sure the two bars still slide freely. Put two nickels in the bottom of the miter slot, then place the miter bar on top of the nickels. With one finger, hold the bottom bar in position. With the other finger, gently slide the top bar in the direction of the arrows. Once both sides of the miter bar are touching the walls of the miter slot, tighten down the button screws. The miter bar should just barely touch the sides of the miter slot. Once the button screws are tightened, slide the miter bar back and forth through the slot a few times to make sure that it moves smoothly and doesn't have any side-to-side -side play. Measure the distance from the saw blade to the nearest edge of each miter slot. Add a quarter of an inch to the measurement of the miter slot closest to the blade and draw a line parallel to the blade. Then draw a perpendicular line on an adjacent side to intersect with that one. The mounting holes are four inches apart on center, so starting from that intersection, mark four inches in both directions on those two lines. This will be the center line of the miter slot for installing the miter bar, leaving a one eighth of an inch gap between the sled and the blade. Use a half inch diameter Forstner bit to counterbore the mounting holes nine sixteenths of an inch deep. Then drill quarter inch through holes in the center of each counterboard hole. Attach the miter bar to the bottom of the sled from the top using the included pan head screws without tightening the screws completely. Use a carpenter square to square up the sled with the edge of the table saw top, then tighten the pan head screws to secure the miter bar to the sled. All right, remember that off cut we had left over from the first step? We're gonna use that to build our fence. Rip one strip down to one and a quarter inches wide and one strip down to two and a half inches. On the one and a quarter inch wide strip, draw a line three quarters of an inch in from one edge all the way down long ways. Then mark one and a half inches and nine inches in from each end. Then drill five sixteenth diameter holes at those locations. These are gonna be the end points of your slots. Now back to the router table. Set your fence to three quarters of an inch and set a quarter inch straight bit at a cutting depth of one eighth of an inch. Wrap between the pre-drilled end points, cutting an eighth of an inch deeper each time until the slots are routed all the way through. Once your slots have been cut all the way through, glue the edge of the one and a quarter strip to the face of the two and a half inch strip, like so. Now let's get our dovetail bit back in and route a track down the middle along the face of the fence. When you use this fence on your 360 sled, you can set your fence at any angle using the dovetail hardware in perpendicular tracks like this. Depending on the size of your workpiece and the angle you want to cut, you may need to try a few different configurations to get your fence right where you want it. Play around with it. It's fun. If you want to add a stop to your fence, it can be as simple as a block of wood with two holes in it. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. And that's how it's done. 